Dr. Sean is in the house. Hey everybody, Dr. Sean is in the house. I hope you're finding blessings and Memorial Day today and that you had an exquisite day if you're joining us. And you might be joining us on the Project Forgive page. You might be here through our Dr. Sean page, the Joy page, Positive Compassion. And our new page that we're going live is Positive Family Quotes. Also, we also uh, have a Facebook, um, gosh, what can I think of the word? Facebook group, there it is. <laughs> Joy is a habit. And I'm um, just thrilled that you're here. Tonight's topic is thinking versus feeling. This is probably the most prominent dichotomy. Dichotomies are when you juxtapose two different things. Usually they feel like polar opposites, thinking versus feeling. And we're gonna unpack that a little bit. And before I start unpacking, I can see you guys are showing up. Hey, 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 hey. Just gotta do a couple of commercials. For those asking, Joy is a habit, I'll make sure I put up a link if you want to join our page. I love that freaking page. It's definitely my sense of humor, <laughs> and um, which is appropriate humor, I think, in public. And um, our next The Apology You'll Never Receive workshop takes place on June 13th. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern. I will put up the link for the event. It's on the Project Forgive page. The cost, it's on Zoom, the cost is $6.99. No one is ever turned away, ever. We have scholarships from folks like you providing stars. All you have to do is email us at joy at projectforgive.com and we'll get you hooked up highly in our office. It's simply exquisite. She'll get you hooked up. Okay? Um, also, message me with questions. Tonight I'm going to address at least one question. We get a lot of questions, which is great. It guides what I do my lectures on. And um, I'm going to be addressing... Brenda's question, you'll hear it very shortly here. And tonight's lecture is complicated. It's complicated and it's simple. Thinking versus feeling. It's really a lecture about self-awareness. There's nothing for you to do, just start noticing. I'm getting a lot of emails from folks because of the holiday, they can't join tonight. It ain't there for it can be. We record these, you can always look at it later can relook at it with the complicated ideas I'm going to present tonight and um, allow yourself to absorb. That's really the key of tonight. So I'm going to focus on three things. Our brain grasps in threes. I'm going to focus on where you lean on the spectrum of thinking versus feeling. I'm going to guide you through it so there's nothing you have to worry about. We're also going to look a little bit at emotional intelligence, which is really what this is. And we're going to unpack trusting your gut. I trust my gut. I'm sure some of you trust your gut too, but sometimes our gut is wrong. Oh my goodness, because it gets complicated in our own triggers, our own trauma, our own pain, and we think it's our gut, but it's not actually our gut. It's based on a past trauma response. So we're going to unpack that just a little bit, which I think is the brilliance of this lecture tonight in the conversation of thinking versus feeling. Okay, so with that said, I want you to just think for a second. When it comes to thinking versus feeling, where do you lean? It doesn't mean that you don't have one and don't and have the other. Um, the, the one that I love all the time is I'm called sensitive all the time. I was actually, it was a, it was a diss. It was a, a thing in my family. I was the sensitive one. It was seen as a negative thing, very empathic wear my heart on my sleeve. I get my feelings hurt very easily since growing up. So I tend to lean on the thinking empathic side. The more thinking side would be more linear, more engineerish, for lack of a better term, and I'm not stereotyping, just so you know. It's just to help have it be more efficient. Where do you lean? Do you tend to be more thinking? Do you tend to be more feeling? And if you don't quite know, if we say, oh, I got both, and we all have both, we just have one that we lean toward. And um, here's a couple of examples. And I'm gonna use Moana as an example first. Here's Moana. There's Tafiti and Moana for the Moana fans. This, uh, this picture is in my bathroom. It's hanging up when I get out of the shower because I love Moana that much. And I love the whole premise, I love I love the warrior energy in Moana. Let me describe it in a feeling way, then I'm going to describe it in a thinking way. How's that? Moana is amazing. 
Moana faces her darkest fear with Taka, who's this fire-breathing dragon. It reminded me so much of what I dealt with when I caregived for my mother. My mother was so difficult, and every day was a battle to be with her. It was just her and I left after my father and my sister died, and I was with her a good year, her caregiver, and it was excruciating being with her much of the time. And I always felt like Moana facing this fire-breathing Taka, and then discovering that she written good to feel the emotions, discovering she turned into this beautiful, precious defeaty because she was just trapped in her pain, trapped in her anger, and that cut me through so much. So that's the feeling place. It's very emotional for me, okay? Now, I can change gears in my own self-awareness, in my own body, and I can go into the thinking place. Here's me describing Moana in a thinking place. I see you guys' messages, rock and roll. So Moana is this fierce young woman who takes on challenging her heritage belief systems. She goes on this adventure and this journey, and she's so brave and so strong, and she brings back the heart of Tafiti to her people. Not as emotional. I don't even feel caught up in any emotion or any deep feelings of my own trauma with my mama. Okay, It's a very big distinction, thinking versus feeling. Here's another example. Here's the feeling place with my doctor's office. I have had the same doctor for 20 years. Her name is Dr. O'Dowd. I love her. For 20 years I went to her. I just felt so good. I could share. She knew my history. I loved her and she retired. Ever since she retired, I've been bounced around to five, six, seven different doctors in this office. It's been grueling. I don't feel valued as a patient. They can't even send my prescriptions to the right pharmacy. They screw it up every single time. I just had a, I've never been to a male doctor. I just had a, in my portal, they just said, this doctor said, you can't do this. He said, blah, blah, and I'm thinking, how can this male doctor make a decision for me he's never met me he doesn't even know who i am and i just hate going to this doctor's office i'm actually ticked off that's the feeling place the thinking place with the doctor's office wow dr o'dell was amazing and i'm going to go on a journey to find a doctor that i will adore as much as dr o'dell this office doesn't have it for me anymore I kept trying for two years to make it work. And you know what the truth is? Maybe I'm self-sabotaging and pick, staying with the doctor's office that no longer meets my needs. I can pick somewhere else. Takes me out of the feelings of trauma, takes me into a thinking place, and creates this amazing space, okay? Love that. I get a question from Brenda. Brenda was, what do you do when the actions of someone are so unforgivable and they get away with things taking secrets to their grave? Now let's do thinking and feeling with that. First of all, I'd be remiss to, to not say that un, when I see the words unforgivable, taking secrets to the grave, that usually means something pretty serious. I don't know what it is, so I'm going to make one up, okay? And I've just had someone recently share this with me. She found a friend of mine, or an acquaintance of a friend, found out that she thought her dad was her dad, and she didn't discover it till in her 50s he wasn't her dad. That's a shocker, okay? Some people might call that unforgivable. I wouldn't, because I believe most things are forgivable if you really work on them. And something that's unforgivable doesn't mean you have to be friends with someone, doesn't mean you even have to be in a relationship. It's about peace for yourself. So there's many pieces to this. The feeling part is, oh my gosh, this breaks my heart. This hurts so much. The thinking part gives me reprieve when I say something like, wow, a lot must have been going on here. I have a lot to unpack here. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt. I don't know the circumstances. This is too big for me to deal with right now. And I'm going to ebb and flow with that as I start processing this because this is going to be a journey. Make sense? Okay. Thinking versus feeling. Where do you tend to go? I tend to use the 
feelings as an example because I'm a very feeling person. And thinking versus feeling, maybe someone shares they're in a lot of pain with their stepmom. You might go to the thinking place and saying it's not that big of a deal when the feeling place would be more words like, wow, I get what you're saying, validation. So if all else fails when you're in the thinking place and that's where you lean, validating someone's experience is a great way to touch upon feelings. Okay, now with that said, because I'm coming to this third part here in a sec, I just want to presence emotional intelligence. There's like four pieces to it. There's self-awareness. Self-awareness is at the core of everything. I really believe that. It describes your ability to not only understand your strengths and weaknesses, but also to recognize emotions, your emotions and the effect they have on you and also people around you. And there's a study that I saw by Tasha Yurik that I thought was really cool. And she said 95% of people think they're deeply self-aware. 95% of people. The actual is only 10 to 15% of us actually are. We're in rote, automatic thinking reaction a lot as human beings. It takes work to create self-awareness, right? Another part of emotional intelligence, and don't worry, all my notes will go up in the lecture as soon as it's over, okay? There's nothing you have to write down. Self-management is the second one in emotional intelligence. It refers to your, your ability to manage your emotions, particularly when you're in stressful situations, maintaining a positive outlook despite setbacks, self-management, when you have self-management, you tend to um, re not react and have a way to keep your impulses in check because a lot of our reactions are impulses. And impulses are automatic. Self-awareness helps alleviate and stop those reactions. Social awareness is another piece to emotional intelligence. Understanding and being able to read a room and see what's going on. Describing your ability to recognize others' emotion, emotions and, and um, see the dynamics in play. And relationship management is the fourth part of emotional, man, uh, emotional intelligence. And it's your ability to manage yourself so exquisitely that you can influence, coach, and mentor others and particularly to help resolve conflict, and which that's what I'm deeply, deeply most interested in. So with that said, we got those four pieces with self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. Now I want to take you to the crux of this. I've said all this preamble to get to the point of trusting your gut. Trusting your gut is so important. It's deeply important. But what if? Your gut is off sometimes. I like to think my gut is never off. I trust my gut implicitly. When I dance between thinking and feeling, I'm noticing that my gut is sometimes wrong because I'm in the feeling place that is with triggers, that has reactions to it. Here's some examples. Everything I'm saying tonight, thinking versus feeling, is things to consider and ponder and see what resonates for you. There's no tried and true way to do this. This is all about your own self-awareness, okay? So trusting your gut. I'm gonna say this out loud. I say this very comfortably out loud. I was molested as a kid. And I get visceral gut reactions to certain people, Not a, it's not every day, just these very, very bad vibes from someone, like the hair goes up on the back of my neck. I listen to that deeply. Now let's take another topic with trusting your gut. My daughter got divorced. Married for many years, he left her pregnant with two other children. Risky pregnancy, it was a hot mess. I was livid. I ended up helping her for three months, moving out of state and helping her and just working from her home. And the truth is, the real truth, I didn't like him from the minute I met him 17 years ago. And, but, and, it was my job to support my daughter and her choices, love as best as I could, and be as kind as I could and support her. And so the feelings that I have, like true, true feelings. I hate them. I want to kill them. I, uh, I have 
I'm so angry. I watch repeated trauma with, he hasn't seen him in two months. It's an ongoing painful thing and I'm in a lot of pain about that. I will process that. That might take some time. I trust the process of that. So the feelings are deep. The feelings are real, they're valid. But here's the thing. I can't take those that feeling place when I'm hanging out with my grandchildren. They're 14 months, six and 13. I can't be in that feeling place of upset, anger, angst with my grandchildren. So I go to the thinking place. Here's the thinking place. Wow, my grandchildren are half of their dad. So they are part of him, he is part of them. That alone garners my respect. If I carry this hatred to my grandchildren, they're going to feel it. They won't share with me, they won't communicate with me. I need to put my emotions, my feelings to the side and come back with, here's the key word, empathy. Here is the aha for the whole lecture. Empathy, we think, is an emotion. Empathy is a thinking activity. Empathy is a thinking activity. Let me tell you what I mean. Sometimes we confuse sympathy and empathy. Empathy is showing compassion under an understanding to someone. Sympathy is more of a feeling of pity. Empathy is our thinking ability to understand how someone feels. Sympathy may be our relief in not having the same problems and in essence our own guilt, trauma, feelings. So many times we think we're being empathic, but we're actually being sympathetic. Empathy is a thinking activity. It's emotional intelligence. In empathy, I can put myself in someone else's shoes without my baggage. Here's an example. I have a girlfriend. I don't have permission to say her name, so I'm not going to say her name. Her mother recently died. Very similar mother to mine. We both had very similar painful mothers that were difficult. And we had to grow our own worthiness and confidence. And so when she starts talking about her mother and her feelings that are coming up, I can feel my feelings of anger, resentment. I can jump on that bandwagon with her in a minute. That's not emotional intelligence. It's not empathy. When I go to the empathic place, I'm validating her. I'm not bringing my stuff into the picture. I'm separating that by dancing between thinking versus feeling. So I, when she's sharing, I might say, oh, I can get that. That makes sense she would feel like that. My whole vibe is different. My whole demeanor is different. I'm not mired in my own stuff, my own trauma feelings. What I used to label as empathy, no. It was more sympathy slash trauma slash guilt. So look, it takes some time and look up what does empathy really mean? And try to see it with fresh eyes because we think we know what it means. I do, I'm just loving these new ahas I've been having over the last couple of months as I'm dancing between thinking versus feeling. I'm gonna end with a doozy example. I do have a stepdaughter that's not talking to me and my husband. That sucks, that's horrible. I have a lot of empathy for grandparents who are not getting access to a set of grandchildren because we don't have that access right now. And I can go into some feelings and trauma about that, upset, all kinds of things. I keep choosing the thinking place that my stepdaughter is doing her work. She thinks this is what's best in her mind's eye right now. I'm gonna trust the process, trust that she's doing her best. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm an exquisite grandmother. I'm a loving grandmother. And this is the way it looks right now. And that soothes me. Cool way to look at it, okay? But this takes practice. This is a practice of self-awareness.
Okay, that's it for tonight. Next workshop for the apology workshop is June 13th. I'll put up a link. No one has ever turned away. Message me with questions. Next month's lecture topic, it's June 26th. I show up at the lecture every last Monday of the week. Um, last Monday of the month, pardon me, at 6.30 Eastern. I'm going to take on being vulnerable with the wrong people. You ever done that? Been vulnerable with the wrong people? Yes, there's red flags everywhere. Sandra, I just adore you for the validation. Sometimes it's risky stuff to get here and say some of the things I say. And it feels valuable to me. I, and the reason I do it is because I wished I would have had that for me when I was trying to unpack and figure things out. So that's why it inspires me to do so. So thank you for that. So, all right, big love everybody. I'll see you next time. I'll see you June 13th if you're coming to the workshop and I'll see you next month. I do plan on going live to bring some joy. Our spot at the lake house is just beautiful and we've been doing a lot of work there and just bring some joy by being there, okay? All right, good night everybody. Thanks for staying tuned.